Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Mutual Broadcasting System presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called Symphony in D Minor. Personally, I believe in the law of the jungle. I believe that the fight goes to the strong, to the one that's smarter, to the one that ought to win. I've made my way in life that way. You can't tell me anything different. I never got past high school myself. I had too much to do to waste time going to college. I get I did it. I've got just about everything I ever wanted. What I haven't got yet, I'll get. The only thing I ask of anybody is get out of my way. Either that or get out of my way. One-sided or wheel off. That's my motto. Friend, I may take a wheel off just for good luck. Let's not have any misunderstandings about me. I'm tough, and I know it. Now, I got nothing against you. If I had, you wouldn't be just sitting there listening. You'd be, well, you'd be out of luck, like a like a certain party is going to be one of these days very soon, which I'm going to tell you about shortly. Look, friend, don't get the idea that just because I'm tough, I'm not smart. Because I am. Because I'm going to show you shortly just how smart I am. You want to hear Good. Last night I was a guest in his house. A very interesting evening. You see, he's a psychologist, a very smart man. Degrees, honors, knowledge. A beautiful wife. And black glasses. Yeah, that's right, he's blind. Very convenient for certain parties. For example, a party named uh, Carol, his wife. For a party named Ray me. See what I mean, friend? You don't? Yeah, you will shortly. He was sitting on a blue Davenport. Oh, I didn't tell you his name. Johannes. I'll just call him Johannes so you'll not get too much of a line on him. I wouldn't want anybody to slip him any information he shouldn't have, you know. Well, he was sitting on the blue Davenport. Carol was upstairs finishing a radio script. Yeah, she's very smart. But she'll have to stop that after she marries me. I don't want any wife of mine working. So anyway, Johannes and I were sitting there, batting the breeze, as you'd say, in the quartermaster corps. I was bored, but Johannes wasn't. He just keeps right on talking. It's different whether you believe it or not, Ray. It's a scientific fact. And I have occasion to use it a great deal. It's bunk. Like all the rest of this psychology racket. I'm not going to try to convince you. Oh, you can't convince me. I could, though. Look, Johannes, I don't believe in it. And even if I did, I know you can't hypnotize a person against his will. You think so? I know so. You want to try a little experiment? No. Well, there's no point in it. You're sure a man can't be hypnotized if he doesn't want to be? Sure. Well, I won't argue with you. Uh, Look, hand me that push button on the extension cord there by the desk. This? By the desk. This is the only thing... Is that it? Here. Thank you. What's it for? It's a gadget I have. Listen. What's that? Make you sleepy? Oh, it hurts my ears. Might make you sleepy. Has a very interesting sound. Listen to it carefully, Ray. See if it doesn't give you a kind of heavy, drowsy feeling. Make you want to just lie back and shut your eyes and think about sleeping. It's a lot of bunk. So many people find it's an ideal way to go to sleep. It's better than sleeping pills. It's better than a soft feather bed. It just relaxes your mind so you can't think of anything but just going to sleep. I wish you'd turn it off. I can go to sleep in 30 seconds with it if I want to. You could, too. You could sleep right away if you wanted to. If you'd relax. Uh, That's it. 
You're getting sleepy already, aren't you? Oh, I am not. Nothing like sleep. Nothing like relaxing back in that nice, soft, easy chair and letting your head fall back and taking deep breaths. Deep breaths, the way you do when you're asleep. Take five deep breaths, Ray. See what happens. There's a lot of nonsense. No, it's good sense, Ray. Try sleeping. Make you feel better. Shut your eyes and listen to that sound. Relax. Breathe deeply. Take it easy. And sleep. And sleep. And sleep. And sleep. And I was so bored I just dropped off to sleep a minute while he was mumbling away. I wasn't asleep a minute, but you know how it is. You get bored listening to somebody yada da yada da and... Yeah, you know. I woke up when Carol opened the door and came in. I got right up out of my chair. She startled me, I guess. I never was so glad to see anybody. I was bored with Johannes. And the funniest thing happened. Johannes whistled. And I walked right over to Carol without thinking what I was doing. And I kissed her. Now, why the devil did I do that? I said, kind of stupid, because I was scared right in front of him. And... Johannes nearly had a fit weapon. <laughs> Said you couldn't be hypnotized, Ray. What are you talking about? You were out like a light, my friend. I was not. And I gave you a post-hypnotic suggestion that when I whistled, you were to kiss Carol. Uh, are you kidding, Johannes? Of course I'm not kidding. You're the most natural hypnotic subject I've ever run across. Why, you can be hypnotized at the drop of a hat without even knowing it. Now, what do you think of that? I'll tell you what I think. I think this character, Johannes, is smarter than I thought he was. But not smarter than I am, certainly, but you know, smart. Even though he doesn't suspect anything, and even though he can't see, I have got to be careful. Haven't I, Carol? I'll see you tonight about a quarter to eight, huh? It sure is too bad your husband can't go to the theater with us, isn't it? I go in, I sit down, and I look at Johannes. I give him a very large, affable hello. I say, well, how you doing, Svengali? <laughs> I hope you didn't mind that little experiment last night, Ray. No, it was very interesting and instructive, Johannes. Yes, it was. Very instructive. Yeah, I should say so. I'm going to watch out for you. Hmm? I don't want to be stretched out over two chairs with people breaking rocks on my chest. <laughs> I saw that once when I was a kid in a vaudeville show. Oh, I don't do things like that. <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now. Uh... You asleep, Ray? Yes. I'm asleep. You went to sleep very easily this time, didn't you? Yes. You told me last night to go to sleep whenever I heard that sound. You didn't like the sound. No, I didn't. But I do now. It puts me to sleep. You know you are to do anything I tell you to do. Oh, yes, sure. If I told you to bark like a dog... Uh, sing for me. That's enough. And tell me the truth about everything. Oh, yes, your highness. What about Carol? I'm going to take her away from you, your highness. That's what you said last night. Oh, yes, I remember. Do you love her, Ray? Not especially. But she's pretty and... I'd rather have her than to have you have her. She's my wife, Ray. I know it. Why, Ray, don't you think it's rather reprehensible to steal a man's wife? Especially a blind man who doesn't know what's going on? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, it is. I guess it is if you say so, Your Highness. Does Carol love you, Ray? She says she does. Uh, I used to love her myself. 
quite a great deal, as a matter of fact, Ray. That's too bad. But after what you told me last night and now, I realize that she's been paying me for a sucker. Hasn't she? She sure has. You think I should love her now? No. Well, I don't. Good. Ray, what would you do if your wife ran away with another man? I haven't got a wife, Johannes. Yet. But if you did have one who played you for a sucker the way Carol's played me, would you kill her? Of course I'd kill her. All right. Ray, you kill Carol. All right. When? Well, now, we don't want to get me mixed up in this little act of simple justice. Do we, Ray? Oh, no, of course not. Well, then, we'll have to do it some time and some place when I'm not around. All right, Johannes. You say when and where. How about your place? All right. As a matter of fact, you and Carol weren't really going to the theater tonight, were you? Oh, no, we're going out to a nightclub where we can be alone for a while. I see. Well... Couldn't you stop by your place tonight? All right. Stop by my place tonight. Now, let's see. You're a music lover, aren't you, Ray? Oh, yes. And you have a phonograph. And lots of records. Help me to the piano. All right. There. Feel it? Yes, yes. Sit down. Let's see. You, uh, you know this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Symphony in D minor by César Franck. Symphony in D minor by César Franck. Well, when you get to your place, you put this symphony on the phonograph. All right. And when you come to this part. When I come to that part... You go and strangle Carol. I go and strangle Carol. Murder her. Murder Carol. That's right. When you hear this... that I murder Carol. All right. What are you playing, Ray? Oh, it's you, Johanna. <laughs> Sounds like a funeral hymn, a little. Doesn't it, Carol? Wake up, Ray. This is better than going to the theater someplace, isn't it, dear? But I don't like being here, Ray. Ah, it's all right. Don't you like... Listening to music? I like listening to music, all right, darling. But do you realize there isn't any music? What? The machine stopped, sweetheart. Oh. Well, I'll start it again. Kiss me first. You turn on some more lights first. Isn't it bright enough in here? <laughs> Creepy, Ray. I keep feeling as if something's going to happen. Oh, don't be silly. What could happen? Nothing, sweetheart. I just feel that way. All right. Is that better? Much better. Now you can get me. Thanks. Oh, your lips are cold. I tell you, I feel scary. Oh, stop. <laughs> Let's listen to the music. I love César Frank. And me? And me. Okay. <laughs> I gave you, and you'll find a woman murdered and the murderer there with her. That's right. Have a 
mind, I know. Go at once, Odyssey. It's important to keep them waiting. Oh, it's so beautiful. You could die to that music. Carol, I love you. Ray, I love you. Car 32, apartment 1603A, 444 Stuber Street. Investigate. Car 32, apartment 1603A. 444 Stuber Street. Investigate. That is all. Wait! Who is it? Police officers. What? It's police officers. Wait just a minute. What do you... We had a call to investigate. What do you got all the lights off for? Huh? Somebody blew out a fuse, officer. I did, eh? Right in the middle of a record we were playing. Yeah. The Cesar Franck B minor symphony. Hey, Kelly, flash your light in here. Are you all right, lady? Certainly I'm all right. Well, that ain't the way we got it. Well, that's the way it is. Listen a minute. Your telephone, mister. Uh, No, wait. I'll get it. Now, what the devil? What in the world, Ray? You want it? Oh, Oh, the lights are back. I, I'd better turn that off. Uh, wait a minute, Carol. Somebody's playing a joke on you, mister. I hope. Uh, who, who was it? Uh, somebody wanted to know if the lady was dead. I said she certainly ain't. I says they was playing a, a Frank D. Minor's sympathy and the fuse blew out. And then he hung up. Johannes. You want me to go lock him up? You know him? No. Carol. I remember. Quick. Turn off the record. Oh, what's the matter? Turn it off. Hey, now, what are you going to do over there? What? What are you busting the records for, Mac? Why, excuse me, officer. I I just remembered something. Something a man didn't have time to tell me to forget. You see, even the smart boys forget. If he told me to forget that post-hypnotic suggestion of his about murdering Carol when I heard that music, he'd have been all right. I'd never have known the difference. He'd have had another chance at me. But he forgot to tell me. And so, he doesn't know what I know. He doesn't know what I'm going to do. Carol's in there talking to him now. Carol opened the window. Sure, I told her all about it. She's in it with me. She opened the window. A poor blind guy, a blind would-be murderer. Nobody will wonder much if a poor blind guy made a mistake and fell out a window. It's a long drop. Everybody will be so sorry. His poor wife. And me. And him, I bet. That's what you get for being too smart for your size, eh? <laughs> Give a quarter to hear the line of talk that's going on in there now. Carol is sweet as pie. Johanna's thinking fast while she sets it all up. <laughs> you never suspect a thing. <laughs> oh, man, we're in. <laughs> Give a quarter to know what they're saying in there. Must be good. <laughs> that must be rich. <laughs> He didn't kill you, so you have to kill him. Whatever you say, Johannes, I'll kill him. It'll be a little poetic justice, won't it? 
Oh, yes, Johannes. You know that Franck D minor theme, Carol? Oh, yes. It's beautiful. The one that was to be a signal for him to strangle you. Oh, yes. The one that goes... Da, 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 da. That's it. Whenever you hear that melody, Carol, you'll murder Ray. Whenever I hear the music, I'll murder Ray. Whenever. Whenever. You'll take a knife and stab him. I'll take a knife and stab him. When you hear... Come in. I'll get it, Karen. Wake up. Hi, hello, Ray. All over. Too bad, Carol, wasn't it? It's a shame. Well, he never knew what hit him. And we're both out of it nicely, darling. <laughs> Ain't it wonderful? No. Oh. I just shudder to think what would have happened if that fuse hadn't blown out, Doc. And if I hadn't remembered. Well, I'll never have to worry about that music again. It's so pretty, I I hate to think what might Ray. have... Ray. Huh? I'm still afraid of Oh, it. don't be silly. I am. Oh, stop it. I never want to hear it again. Well, you're going to hear it. Ray, please. Well, now, listen, baby, we might as well get this straight now. I... Ray, please. Listen, darling. Tonight's Quiet Please story was Symphony in D Minor. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper, and the man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And Charita Bauer played Carol. James Van Dyke was Johannes, and the police officer was Pat O'Malley. As usual, music for Quiet Please, including the theme by Cesar Frank, is played by Albert Berman. Now, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. They were all creations of my own again, nor did they represent anybody living or dead. As you already know, this is the last broadcast of Quiet Please on this network. I'm grateful to Bob Berman, our engineer, and to Al April, our very good sound effects technician, for their 63 weeks of help. For the further adventures of Quiet Please, I recommend you read your newspaper next Sunday. And so from now on, on this network, I am quite quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. This will be the last broadcast in the present series of Quiet, Please. In its place for the next four weeks, Mutual will present over most of these stations a new series of dramatic programs dealing with atomic energy. Be sure to be with us at this time next week and the three weeks following for Mutual's new series on atomic energy. This program was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.